Yes, so uh, we were talking about how God is looking for intercessors. Even if there's just one person interceding, it makes a huge difference. We will continue with what we have here in uh, the, the lesson. So the next point for us to consider is that when we pray for someone, God's mercy can be extended to them. When we uh, look, look at Moses, we said that the people were stubborn and you know they were not they were not following whatever instructions they were given or they were not their hearts were not soft towards god so then there were these there, these times when god got angry with them but let's consider how moses prayed for them can somebody turn to exodus 34 verse 8 and 9 please read it aloud and Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us you for your inheritance. Hmm. So, uh, as as Moses is praying for the people, he, uh, you know, he it's it's like you can see that he is praying as a representative for the people, right? So let me just read verse nine. Then he said, "If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let." My Lord, I pray, go among us, even though we, not they. He's identifying with the people. He says, though we are a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us as your inheritance. So sometimes when we are leading or when we are part of a group, like let's say our city. It's easy for us to say, God have mercy on them. They are sinning. They need your help. You know, they need you. But look at how Moses is leading the people and his heart of intercession. He is identifying with the people. He's saying, God, have mercy on us. We are a stiff-necked people. It's my city, Lord. It's my people. Have mercy on us. So he's pleading with God. And he's carrying the right heart for the people. So that is the kind of intercession that Moses makes. And he, he's asking for God to um, give mercy. When we look at people who are going away from God, it can be very heartbreaking and especially if those people are you know were believers or uh, they had they have heard the good news they know god's word and still they are going away from god it's very very uh, discouraging right but we know that god is a god of mercy we can pray and we can say god you grant the mercy lord you know uh, so we are praying you be merciful to my people, our people. Uh, and, and that's how Moses is praying. Let's look at one more scripture uh, where we are going to see those who are going away from God. How to pray for them. 1 John 5 verse 16. If you see any brother or sister committing, commits sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. Okay. So, in general, right? In general, when um, uh, people sin, 
what are we encouraged to do no god is teaching us that we must pray and ask him to give life to those who commit sin so when people are sinning we can pray and say god have mercy on them you know they are sinning you know, maybe uh, we have like family members who are not in christ we look at their lives or they are in christ but they are straying away right we look at them and we feel so bad each time we know what they are up to we know what they are doing and we feel like what shall i say i can't even say anything but what can we do we can pray we can pray when they are sinning we can pray and say lord have mercy on them oh god they don't understand what they are doing but lord you you have mercy on these people have mercy on uh, you know our friends our loved ones that's the way we can pray that's what god is telling when you see them sinning you ask god lord give them life because they are committing sin right so intercession and uh, uh, pleading with god to receive mercy for others that is crucial yes yeah so uh, you said that who are continue in sin and continue in rejecting yes. god and what i feel many of us are in that phase who are sometimes who do we do sin and we like knowingly we reject god like mm. about lying or getting angry yes and like some have anger issues some have lying issues some have this and that so then uh, then how can we explain this thing to this like what you said mm. that mm. who are continuing sin who are continuing rejecting god mm. but in our daily life like if we see hum humanly life we are sinners in our daily life somewhere or other we reject god and how can you explain this? yes so uh, see for uh, like i'm just using the term sincere believer simple believer we sincerely want to walk with the lord and as we are walking with the lord yes we have struggles uh, and we fall that's not what we are talking about that's different here we are talking about willfully meaning i made up my mind to go against christ that's different right so that's the difference that's the difference see in hebrews 6 i'll read out that passage for you for more clarity from verse 4 and it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the holy spirit and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of god and put him to an open shame so it's very serious what it is talking about it's not talking about a sincere simple believer who's trying their best to live for christ so in our situation uh yeah we do fall but we repent we come back we're trying our best to walk with the lord that's different this is willfully putting christ to shame and consciously rejecting no i don't believe in jesus i don't believe in what he has done i don't believe in forgiveness mercy it's gone to that extreme so this is an extreme scenario okay so you all don't have to worry so much about it yeah it's fine okay great so we shall continue what we were saying is uh if we see loved ones going away from god then an effective effective way uh, of for for god to encounter them is pray think about um, uh saul saul encountered christ in acts 9 why people were praying people were praying it was it was supernatural no human being went to him to encounter him but jesus encountered him on the road to damascus and said saul saul why are you persecuting me 
so when we pray for people who are away from the lord genuinely see he is sincere in what he is doing persecution he is thinking he is serving god he doesn't know anything about jesus he doesn't know anything about being born again but when he was sincerely doing the wrong thing god encountered because people prayed believers were all praying they were saying lord you encounter today we pray for our persecutors we pray for those who are, those who are troubling us and we pray like this god you encounter the persecutor lord and as we pray for people who are away from the lord god encounters there is mercy they come into the knowledge of christ so we have to pray for mercy that's the underlying point of what i've been saying from that time okay let's move on so intercession is also seen as the responsibility of leader uh, leadership uh, we said this earlier also so again from the life of moses as he was leading the people in exodus 18 verses 19 and 20 he receives advice from his father in law jethro uh, there's a lot of work there's a heavy load on moses and you know he he really doesn't know how to handle the people when jethro says that okay you appoint leaders and you pray for the people moses you pray for the people go to god on behalf of the people that's why he he is encouraged to pray for the people so if we have any position of leadership uh, it's important to pray for the people whom we are serving all right um yes and why should we pray when we pray there is protection we all remember we talked about it shamar prophetic prayer um, god protected through a prophet because when the prophet heard from the lord uh, he knew like what attacks are coming and so he was praying according to that and he was countering all the attacks of satan so there is protection when the leaders pray for their people there is also direction so we hear from the lord what is it that we must teach the people what is it that we must do for the people so we are going in a prophetic way hearing from god and doing his will so that's how prophetic prayer works the next aspect here is about the help of the holy spirit as far as intercession is concerned so when we are interceding um yes in the natural in in ourselves we can pray to an extent but beyond that we need the help of the holy spirit right so uh, i i remember like uh, i read this one book uh where this person talks about how miracles started happening in his life and in his ministry so he took an extreme step we don't have to take that extreme step his extreme step was he quit his job and he decided that he will sit in his prayer closet the whole day and he will pray so his family said okay fine you want to do it do it so he did that he quit his job sat in the room shut the door morning to evening the first day when he started he he prayed for some time and he thought maybe a few hours have passed by and when he looked at the clock only few minutes had passed by then he thought oh my goodness and now i don't even have my job i have to do this every day it's taking so long to pray how will i pray right and so he talks about how he started depending on the holy spirit to help him to pray and then the holy spirit was helping him he was praying in the spirit praying in the spirit you know listening to the voice of the spirit so he dedicated himself to this kind of praying and what happened is after a couple of weeks um uh, th- there was uh, in in his area there was a church and somebody who was going to come for that meeting didn't come the preacher didn't come so they remembered that this man is here and they told him brother can you come and you come and you know you share something because you're seeking the lord why don't you share something so that was the first time he went for the meeting and as he was ministering you know in the supernatural are we do that what are you seeing what are you hearing so for him it was like a first time experience when he went and he started ministering he could see pictures he could see visions he could see all these things and he is ministering for people and people started getting healed people started getting touched 
okay and so he talks about his ministry like that anyway so the point is the help of the holy spirit he talks a lot about how the holy spirit helped him in those hours of prayer hours of prayer uh, because the holy spirit is called as the spirit of grace and supplication supplication do you all remember we learned about it earlier it's earnest prayer crying out to god seeking god sincerely desperately that is supplication so holy spirit is that prayer that spirit who enables us spirit of grace spirit of supplication zechariah 12 verse 10 so what we can do is we can say holy spirit i'm going going to pray for people but i need your help you are the spirit of supplication help me then what happens holy spirit helps us he shows us okay pray for this pray for that he gives us that supernatural strength that we can continue to pray and these prayers are impacting people's lives so we can depend on the holy spirit we don't have to do it on our own do it with the holy spirit intercede with the power of the holy spirit and then of course praying in tongues we talked a lot about it the spirit helps us in our weaknesses when we do not know how to pray right he gives us through groans and sighs we are able to express what the spirit is you know uh, what is the heart of the spirit and so praying in tongues is very helpful even in intercession when we want to pray for people and imagine we don't have words i i remember this one situation one uncle told me he had some uh, uh, health issue and uh, he had gone i think to central church at that time and somebody was praying for him and he went and asked for prayer and that person they prayed little bit in english but i think they didn't know what to pray after that so they told them that if you don't mind i'll just pray in tongues and uh, this uncle was fine they prayed in tongues and that's all he can recall but he came back saying that you know god gave him so much peace and in that health situation you know things turned around for him so there are times when we don't know how to pray for people we can just pray in tongues just let the spirit take over say holy spirit you pray through me and then just switch to tongues right and that is powerful intercession and when we do this you know, we will see results all right so let me quickly come to the last section here regarding intercession it says that there are a couple of ingredients that make us a successful intercessor the first one is the love and compassion of god in our hearts when we don't care about what people are going through intercession may not come so easily because we are only occupied about my own life god you help me you bless me okay you do everything for me i'm fully focusing on me my home my family that's it but for us to be an intercessor we need to care about people and people share now i'm not saying that be overwhelmed by all the problems of other people in the world no there's a healthy balance okay for our mental emotional health there's a healthy balance we at the end of the day we are not god we won't be able to take on so much Uh, of of uh, you know all the concerns of the world but to an extent god has made us in such a way that we can express care and concern for what other people are going through so when we have when there is love and compassion we look at jesus he looked he looked at the people they were like sheep without shepherd so he was moved with compassion and he healed them the scripture says so when we are moved with compassion for people what do we do we pray so intercession 
is birthed out of compassion and love. Intercession may also involve some sacrifice because we care so much for people. As I told us, setting aside time to pray for somebody, fasting for somebody. Okay, that's kind of, uh, I mean, in, in today's world, tell me who will do that. We struggle to fast for ourselves, but then fast for another person. But that is part of love and compassion where we are willing to do it. I remember this was, uh, I think, towards the end of my college, there was one um, sister, we call, used to call her Akka. And um, uh, I think I was looking for a job and, and all that. So she told me, you know what, I will uh, fast for you. And that was very new for me. I thought, why will you fast for me? Who, who fasts for another person? But she did. And in those days, you know, fasting was new for me, so I was not used to it. And she said, do you want to learn how to do this? I said, yeah, sure, why not? So she said, okay, you fast with me. Don't eat these meals uh, and this and that. And you come to my house, you know, two o'clock, and then we will sit for a time of prayer. We will read the Bible. We will do all this. We will worship. And then we will break our fast in the evening. So I actually learned how to fast being there. But the point is, I was thinking, why does she care about my job or what I am going through? But love and compassion, we pray for people, we fast for people, right? We extend our concern through prayers. So if we don't care, then it's hard to intercede. But when we care, it's easy to intercede. So we need that heart of love and compassion. So we can pray and ask God, God, give me a heart of uh, compassion, Lord, so that I can be an effective intercessor. Desire to see change in the prevailing condition. So this is another thing that moves us. When we see somebody going through a particular situation, Right? Let's say a young person, young person in depression. Every time you're seeing that person is in depression, we feel moved. We say, how long, how long will this child face this? I have to pray. Change. This has to change. This person has to encounter God's presence, God's power, experience joy. So what is it? There's a stirring in us where we can't take it. No. This should not be the case. It has to change. Or we see a young person struggling for a job. We can't take it. We say, no, they have to get a job. We'll pray. We'll pray. As long as it takes, we'll pray. Somebody is sick. As long as they are healed, we'll pray. So that is the way the heart of an intercessor, an effective intercessor, a successful intercessor works. Imagine if we just give up. Yeah, I prayed two times enough. Over, cut their name from the list. <laughs> so sad, no? The breakthrough has not yet come. Right? Unless, you know, the Holy Spirit says, okay, enough. It's already done. You can stop. So having that fervor to pray till we see a result or a change is necessary for an intercessor. Then identification. You remember, we, we said earlier, where uh, Moses says, God, forgive us, have mercy on us, we have sinned. So especially when we are praying for our family or we're praying for our city or church, there may be times where we'll have to do that. Now, obviously, we know there are many crimes happening in the city. I didn't do the crime. Why should I say, God, forgive us? But... In intercession, in many places we see prayers like that, where people pray and say, God, forgive our land, forgive our sins. The sins of the land, we are identifying as our own sins. God, it broke your heart to see this crime. Forgive us. I am part of those people. So I can't, we can't do us and them. Right? So identification, 
the heart of an intercessor is like that where we identify with whatever has happened and we uh, ask god for re redemption or blessing or in the other in if you switch it around uh, romans 12 verse 15 it says rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep so we see that when we are doing ministry we see that suddenly somebody comes to you with a news of a loved one passing away that family is grieving but then there's another news where you know somebody is getting married that person is happy so now what do you do the scripture says rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who weep so we do our best to participate in what people are going through right so we get excited for people. Oh, congratulations, something good is happening. Something wonderful is happening. Come, let's give thanks to the Lord. Right? We are, we are praying together. We are interceding. Saying, oh God, thank you. You know, you do more. But someone's going through pain, difficulty. We weep with them. We feel for them. And we pray for them in accordance to what they require. So identification, whatever people are going through, we need to, um, you know, sort of, be a part of that right and again in in a uh, balanced way then two more things that make for good intercessors the next one is boldness boldness so boldness is here because many of the prayers that we pray could be seeking for an impossible result so when we are asking god god let there be this breakthrough it can sound almost impossible, but boldness means having faith for the impossible. We believe. No, it's okay. It doesn't matter. There's a hindrance. There's a difficulty. There's a wall. No problem. We will pray and God will work. So having faith, having boldness is necessary for an intercessor where we don't worry. Yeah, impossibility may exist, but God is greater than the impossibility. He will turn it around. So boldness. And then, of course, you know, there is fervency and persistence. We talked a lot about it in the situation of Elijah, where we said that he never gave up. And uh, God released you know, the answers. So this, these are the ingredients that make for a good intercessor. Okay, so any thoughts or questions regarding this? Yeah, I I have a question for clarification, yes. Pastor yes. Nancy. Yes. yes. Uh, because intercession is about other people's affairs. Does that mean that uh, there is also a place for clarity, clarifying with the people? Do we always have to refer to them to understand the issues, or can we just perceive it in the spirit and pray? Hmm. So, uh, Brother Movai, are you asking if we should find out the details? Yes, exactly. Ah, okay, okay. Um, answer is yes and no. Because yes is in situations where we just need to know specifically what they need prayer for. Because even Jesus asked, what, what, what do you want me to do for you? So, as a spirit leads, there are times when we have to ask, what is your prayer request? But then, other than that, I think it's okay to, once you know that specific thing, you can just go ahead and pray. They don't have to share too much. Okay, does that make sense, Brother Mavai, or you want me to elaborate on that? I, I think it is clear. Yeah, sure, Thank sure. You. And uh, see, another reason why we are saying this is, for example, let's say someone comes and they say, pray for healing. I need healing for my knees. And uh, we, we start praying for them. Now, if we are asking for more details, okay, what happened to your knees? How did you get the pain? When did it start? Did you jump or did you walk or did you run? You know, also... It's not required to have so much information. Secondly, um, 
when people do talk right a lot they may talk more of uh, impossibility like the doctor has said it will never get better the doctor is saying this that so they are speaking unbelief before a lot of unbelief comes out of their mouth you say ah, enough problem is knee right we pray for the knee so go straight for the prayer and uh, just yeah minister to them D does that help also yeah sure yes right thank you thank you for that question any any other clarifications uh, ma'am yes yeah, uh, is is there any forgive, forgivable sins and unforgivable sins? Because Jesus said, like, uh, uh, if you speak against the Son of God, it will be forgiven. But if you speak against the Holy Spirit, it will not forgive. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, whatever is stated clearly, he's already stated it. Right. So, we have to take that seriously. Um, and... Uh, it, it's my take that what is being spoken there, it's similar to the Hebrew 6 scenario. Got it? So uh, that's why he's saying it's, it's unforgivable. You got it? Like if someone has gone so far away and rejected repeatedly, willfully going away from the Lord, uh, they are probably the ones who are speaking against the Holy Spirit also. So which is why he's saying it's unforgivable. Okay. Okay, I, I think it's uh, quite clear then. Yeah. But there's a question. Yes, brother. Uh, William Branham, uh, when he was. Uh on earth uh, he was uh, uh, like uh, he was thinking he was like elijah so but he didn't reject jesus mm. so can we apply this uh, uh, romans uh, 6 uh, not romans hebrews 6 uh, as uh, he rejected jesus and mm. uh, can we say he fell away mm. yeah so that that's what i said right i i didn't comment on uh... Uh, him falling away or anything. I, I just said that there are instances where you see very clear signs of, you know, people going in the other direction. Now, what happened towards the end? Did they, did they reject Christ? Um, did, did they fall away? I can't comment on it because I don't know what his prayers were, right? Like before he, he went to the went to the Lord. I don't know what, what prayers he had and what happened. So I can't comment on whether he fell away or not. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. Very similar. There are some other instances also we saw when we read about God's generals. They did so well, but towards the end, the ministry was far away from how it was initially. Uh, but yeah, for us to say whether or not they will be in heaven, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't comment on that. Yes. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's quite a lot as far as intercession is concerned. We've uh, looked at many things. So what I would suggest is that we can uh, wrap up here and maybe you can go back and study it thoroughly and come back because in the next class we are going to talk about uh, a deeper level of intercession intercession we've understood but there's a deeper level of intercession so we're going to go to that uh, and uh, that's why if you've read all this through well we will be able to grasp that better so right now let us pray and we are going to close. I want to request uh, any of our students online to pray aloud. Pastor, I can pray. 
Yes, yes, sister. Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord, for your for today's word, Master. Thank you for our, our teacher. Yes, Father God, thank you, Lord God, Master. Lord, make us good intercessor, a true intercessor. As a word says, Papa Ibrahim, he interceded. As a word says, Job, Papa Job, he also interceded. Moses, the Master, like Lord, make us like like Esther, Daniel, God, Master. Yes, Master God, make us true intercessor, Master. Yes, Master God, to save one. To save a nation, city, yes, Lord, country, your God Master. Thank you, Lord. In a village and family, God Master. Thank you, Lord, God Master. Make us good intercessor, a true intercessor, a God Master. Thank you, Lord Master. Esther save his fam her family, God Master. Her people, her God Master. In the same way, Lord Master, there are there are more people in the nation, in the world, God Master. Lord, I be pray, God Master, to save our Master, and we pray and we thank you, Lord Master, for all our heart, God Master, for our teacher, God Master. Thank you, Holy Spirit, God Master. As a word says, Lord Master, Jesus, when he, Jesus in this earth, Master, Jesus also interceded, Master. We pray for same anointing, God Master. Lord, teach us to intercede for your people and for your nation, God Master. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we worship you. Thank you for wonderful word, Master. Yes, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, Master God. Thank you, Jesus, for our teacher. Lord, I thank you. I glorify your name. I give you the glory and praise, O Master. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Sister Puja. Uh, thank you, everyone.